Hello, welcome to Talent Acquisition Trends and Strategy. I'm your host, James Mackey. I'm really excited today. Uh, our guest is a friend of mine that I've known for, for several years. Uh, Janine Yancey, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good, James. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. Before we jump into the topics for today, would you mind just sharing with everybody a little bit about uh, your background and experience? I want everybody tuning in to understand your perspective on the, the, the topics we discuss. Oh, cool. Super. Um, so I'm founder and CEO of M-Train. We uh, provide online education and ethics, respect, and inclusion, as well as um, predictive analytics for, for people to see where the hot spots are before they, they experience them. Um, and I was motivated to do that uh, because I had been an employment in, uh, litigator and workplace investigator, and I saw kind of the behaviors that led to the problems. So I'm like, okay, rather than doing this manually, I need to connect the dots for organizations to be able to do this at scale. Right. Janine, the, the last topic that we wanted to talk about today is basically as our organizations evolve and grow, that the skill sets that you are going to need for your leadership uh, could potentially change. And one of the things we talked about is that in some cases, leaders might essentially hit their head. Uh, on the ceiling after 12 to 18 months, depending on how much the organization has changed and the and the needs and the goals uh, to to that are uh, in place to hit North Star metrics, right? So I'm I'm curious to hear your philosophy on it, and and, and I'm sure that's it's based on your experience, just having run your company since 2004 and and having gone through this and going through the evolution from bootstrap to uh, raising money to everything, pushing up market into enterprise. I mean, you've done so much. So we can start wherever you want to just what, what is your, you know, for, as a, like a mentor, uh, mm -hmm. to, to others, right. Like, uh, in HR people, uh, recruiting executive leaders, like what, what have you learned over the years when it regarded, regarding this topic? Yeah. So I, I really appreciate sharing to other leaders, um, the fact that depending on the rate of change of the business, um, the business will need different people at different times, right? And so, you know, I I feel like maybe with some other, so many other business situations, uh, me and M Train experienced things like at, at full potency because learned everything, you know, kind of on my own the hardest way possible, which is not ideal. Um, but you know, like so on this topic. Because we were, you know, it took us years to go from one square to the next because, you know, I didn't have any business experience. I didn't really have a fleshed out team or or capital. So everything took longer, right? And that makes it harder because as things take longer, you're with like a crew that starts to feel like family and totally permanent. But then when you do get to an inflection point, like, oh, we're in a different ballpark now right so like you're going up the staircase and you're gonna hit several different ballparks which is different than let's say a a traditionally you know backed company by like by venture capital where you know you get your series you get your seed and then quickly you get a series a and like the series a should actually put you on a master plan to a quick hockey stick, right? And, and in that situation, you're growing really, really quickly and you're gonna go from zero to 20 million very easily, right? And in a short amount of time. And so you won't have that same experience as, as a slow slow growth company like M-Train where you know, you're, you're just going through these different stages. And you know, as you go through these different stages, like we went from, as you said, like, you know, SMB because that was the easiest way to start, took the least amount of capital and skill set and you can't it's hard to recruit you know people who understand you know enterprise software when you have no money right so we recruited easier folks to recruit you know so you're going to go from a small business you know focus to mid market that's a different skill set mid market to enterprise that's a different skill set you go from 5 million to 10 million that's a different skill set you're going to go from i'm going to like roll up my sleeves and do everything and it's just like major labor to, okay, I'm going to sit back and, and solve this puzzle and think about the, 
you know, the, the plan and the team I need to get to a certain outcome. That's a different skill set. And the business needs different things at different times. Like mm -hmm. early days, we just needed good natured people that can like work hard. Yeah. Like, and, and, you know, some folks that, I mean, a lot of folks that have solved big business problems, like, I'm sorry, they're not going to want to do manual grunt labor for hours on end. You know, I get it, right? So you need different things at different times. And and I think the hard part for me and like my message to people that are uh, earlier in their journey is it took me way longer than was ideal for myself to understand clinically that's okay. That's all part of the process. Doesn't make me a bad person. <laughs> Doesn't make me you know a bad leader. Because the knee-jerk reaction for people that you have to exit is mm -hmm. like, how could you? We had um, a leader join the company where um, it was somebody like I I knew, um, and I did know personally, but from a skill set perspective, I also thought was because of that relationship, I could probably get in somebody that otherwise, if there was no relationship, I probably couldn't have. Right. Um, and and even upon like an exit scenario where it's like we we laid the foundation of like at the beginning like hey look like you know what time we're working together the business has to come first like I hope we can you know do that and you know understanding that things can change in the future and you know if we can you know kind of segment that out and understand where we're both coming from and and hopefully continue a relationship in some form or another post working together this probably isn't going to last forever right. uh, you know it's it's going to be a chapter and I, hopefully it's a great chapter and. Uh, at some point, a chapter is likely to come to an end. Are we okay with that? Of course, yeah, yeah, we're okay. Well, you know, it, it's over and uh, I've been cut out, right? So, I mean, I just say, you know, where you just don't, you're not able to maintain a relationship. And I think that that's a slightly different situation because I knew the person ahead of time. But mm -hmm. what I have done is for even like leaders that I pull in, I try to explain the importance of like, we have a goal as a team mm -hmm. and our roles within the organization are likely to change yeah. as the company evolves. And so I've been very careful uh, about titles that I hand out so yeah. that I can hire in people over. And I try to communicate when I initially hire a leader that I am open to them potentially continuing in the capacity they are now or promoting them to a role. But at the end of the day, our job in business is to maximize our success to align with whatever, whatever North store metric we're after. And so that is, that's the focus and whatever role you need to play in order to help us get there. Like we hope, right. I hope we could be flexible and understand that that's the goal. And, you know, for some of our key leaders, we decided to do like, we don't have restricted stock, but we have like phantom equity. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. like, I try to remind folks, like, you want that to be at the maximum valuation and right. what do you want? Right. More. It's like, uh, do you, do you want the money or the title? And it's, it's, you know, getting people to remember that it's a team sport and that the social fabric, it, we can feel like we keep coming back to that. And I feel like if you have that conversation up front, it helps. But the reality is that even when you do, like people are still going to feel burnt. I think sometimes, not all the time. Not and all I, the time. Yeah. yeah. I reference like one of the most successful leaders um, and she's actually becoming an advisor to Secure Vision, but she scaled a company from like, early series a to publicly traded and she was like wow. their wow. first sales hire and then she was basically the gm of north america and oversaw like millions and millions and millions of dollars in revenue and she's just a god she's amazing right and now she's ceo for another SaaS company um but anyways like her progression path wasn't like she was all, like she went into like sales leadership and then like they hired a cro and then she did this other role and then like those people would get let go and then she went into like run everything again and then she got replaced like her path to success wasn't like lead 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 top person it yeah, was yeah. she played the role the company needed to play and she always went all in and found a way to add value and she ended up running like the whole thing as a result wow and so i always point to her as like you know be flexible put the mm -hmm. team first, help us hit our goals. And that's actually what's going to put you in the best position, not getting defensive about what your title is, right? Or like uh, what, you I know think, what I mean? Yeah, I think that's perfect advice. And that that is so true. And I can think of people on on uh, on my team here at M Train who have done similar, right? right. And um, 
you know, and it, it just becomes more and more obvious that they're the right people at the right time with the right skills to take the, you know, take another step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And it's like one of the mistakes from a hiring perspective, just to put that out there too. It's like, sometimes we entice, not we like you and I necessarily, but like leaders. Oh, with titles. Entice. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. I, no, I made there. I mean, And in fact, sick. yeah. I mean, like, I think back to like, like vice president of sales is a classic, right? right. And I, I, I'm sorry. If you're under 20 million, you shouldn't be a VP. Like I'm looking back to, <laughs> it's like, mm, yeah, anything under 20 million, really not VP worthy. You're still, That's interesting. Right maybe senior director. I mean, because like it takes a certain like base to even, I don't know. Right. To, to so, lead an organization that's like, yeah. Right. Yeah. I definitely can see that. It's an interesting perspective. I'm going to have to roll that over for longer. Well, think about it because I, I just, some of the, some uh, to your point, James, some of the most difficult situations I've had to navigate are people with these titles that I've like, you know, naively put out there and they get so connected to their title because it's their identity. So I, I get it. We're all human. Um, you know, and I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, uh, you hired me to do a job. Let me do it. You know, I am the expert. It's like, yeah. And when things are going up and to the right, I will be the first one to say, woohoo, I'm going to go focus on something else. But when things aren't going up into the right, so sorry. You know, yeah. expect some, some, someone to be in your sandbox looking. Do you think that people can ever like successfully level up? Like, let's say you have somebody in charge of sales or whatever, and it's a smaller org and then the company, they do a good job or maybe the market, the tide rises or whatever timing usually some combination of luck and, and hard work uh, to varying degrees. But do you, do you feel like people can make it to that next level or do you feel like it's 90, 90 plus percent of the time, it's like you, you need somebody else at the next stage? I think more often than not, you probably need a different person, but I think it is possible, but I think it's all about um, curiosity and mm -hmm. mindset, right? So if you've got somebody who is super intentional, and doesn't think of themselves as like, you know, CRO or VP or whatever, whatever the title is. Right. right. And instead they're like, okay, I got a new set of problems. Let me figure out how to solve these problems. And they're constantly trying to figure out how to solve problems. Then it's, then, then it's an obvious one. They have a better, <laughs> better shot. Like, I, oh. and that's like, I've had two types. I mean, this is a massive over uh, simplification to put people in two buckets, but like, they're the people that will go the extra mile and do their own self-development mm -hmm. and like will put in the extra hours. Then I've had the leaders who are like, oh, I don't have time to do that. And it's like, well, you want to be a VP and, but you're not really putting in the work that's required to make it to that level. Right. And it's like, you're just, you know. Well, that, and then, and then, you know, outcomes, like, let's just look at the outcomes. Right. Okay, so it's it is human nature to be so connected with your title because it's your sense of self. Yeah. For and sure. still connected with the outcomes you're generating. So like, okay, what outcomes are you generating? Let's just look at that. Yeah. Let's and if they're it. not meeting the business needs, well, that's on you, leader. So you know, it's not it's not on the CEO. I mean, ultimately it is if the CEO allows sure. to pin you in that role. But if, if you can't solve those problems, you know, maybe you're in over your head. Right. And also like, if there is something preventing you from hitting a metric, like you need to be able to articulate and like via spreadsheets and data, what other right. contributing factors are getting in the way. If, if something is falling within, you know, if the perception is maybe there's a valid argument to be made that something needs to be worked on with product or whatever mm -hmm. else, like, okay, but that has to be presented in a, a data way. And like, I think that that's like one thing that leaders get wrong is they're not necessarily analytical or not. They don't really know how to operate in spreadsheets. They don't know how to necessarily tie their outcomes to North Star metrics, or right. they don't know how like their data should like how like working cross functionally with other leaders. And a lot of VPs are, and this is all stuff you have to learn. Like in addition to executing your day to day, right. you need to understand from that executive level 
how what you do aligns with other departments and North Star metrics and communicating that to your CEO. And I feel like right. that's a huge missed skill set in most cases. And yeah. why turnover is so high <laughs> for VPs and startups, right? It's probably right. a correlation there. Well, and and then the executive level, the VPs, I mean, you're you're getting paid more, you've got more responsibility. So yeah. it's gonna be more obvious when you're not hitting your outcomes. And yeah, there that's a volatile role. For sure, for sure. Well, look, this is really interesting. I, I know we could keep going. I think we're yes. we're running out of time, so we're gonna have to jump. But Janine, I you know, I I'd love to have you back on the show. It's always so so much fun talking with you and uh, this has been a really great conversation. I know the leaders tuning in will have learned a lot uh, as a result of our conversation. So thank you for coming on today. Oh, thank you, James. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Yes. And for everybody tuning in, uh, we are releasing a new episode every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 5 a.m. Eastern. If you or anybody you know would like to be a guest on the show, we are looking for VPs of talent acquisition, chief people officers, and founder CEOs of companies that are related to anything like talent acquisition, people, culture, uh, anything under that umbrella uh, works for us. Lastly, if you know, if there's any topics you want us to discuss that we haven't, uh, you know, reach out to us on talenttrends.io, uh, shoot us an email. Uh, we have Morella's email on the site that you can find and just let us know if uh, there's anything you want us to cover. We got some really exciting stuff coming up here toward the end of the month. We're going to be bringing on some really incredible uh, co-hosts onto the show from, you know, industry category leading software companies to to join us uh, that are from the recruiting space and more news to that we'll be sharing in the next couple of weeks. So thank you so much. And we'll, we'll talk to you real soon. Take care.